so here we go. All right. All right. Hello, everybody. Um, we are live on Facebook. Uh, I am here with Babu Carter, uh, the past poet laureate of Madison, and she is um, uh, as also the uh, outreach director for the Alzheimer's Dementia Research Center at the U UW in Madison, and is a, a good friend. I'm. I hope she's okay with me saying that. And um, we're going to mm -hmm. talk today about uh, Memory Camp and Moon Beach, but we're also going to um, um, we're going to talk about making care calls uh, f specifically for people with dementia, but um, but it can be for anyone. It could be for your mom, your you know, you maybe you you maybe you have adult kids. True. I think, I think Fabu, you might have adult kids. I do. So these support calls can be for anyone, and in this time of uh, quarantine and COVID, they are particularly important. Now, before we get into that, before we get into it too far, uh, because we are about poetry, and I. Um, love Fabu's poetry and uh, we, she has worked with me uh, for t about 10 years on the Alzheimer's Poetry Project leading uh, sessions and workshops in the Madison area and we do an annual event at the Madison Public Library. Fabu we're gonna have to figure out how we're we gonna maybe we'll do it like this maybe we'll do a webinar but anyway uh, would you honor us by starting with a poem? Well, yes. Um, so I am Babu Carter, and I'm with the Wisconsin Alzheimer's Disease Research Center. And yes, Gary, we are good, good friends. So this is a poem I wrote uh, for the people I work with through the Alzheimer's Poetry Project, and it's called For Our Beloved Elders with Memory Loss. Some call you seniors. I call you wise elders, living long and learning much. You should be honored. Your gray hair, a symbol of victory and authority in life. When your memory hides or flees and every face seems strange, feel the other signs of love, gentle touch, kind voice, the spirit that welcomes you just as you are. Reassure yourselves that you know how love feels, for it will chase the fear of forgetting away. So that's my poem dedicated to people who are struggling with their memories. That is a powerful poem and I have uh, heard you read it a number of times now and I'm always uh, you know just very moved uh, by the eloquence of that poem so uh, thank you for that now we are um, we are live on Facebook but uh, they can't how do they know we're live I don't know how can we prove it to them let I'm gonna do I'm gonna do some crazy gesture and you do it back to me, Fabu, and that way they'll know that, that well, I don't know. They if need a lie. We are alive. This <laughs> probably doesn't prove anything. I just want to do it. So I'm going to do it. Here we go. Yeah. All right. Now, we are talking today uh, about poetry, and our guest uh, speaker today is Fabu Carter. And we are going to talk about a uh, little bit about memory camp. And, um, and then we're going to talk the main uh, bit of this talk. And this, this will be about a, you know, 10 to 15 minute talk, something like that. So, you know, they, are, they say at the beginning, you should always let people know what you're going to do and how long. That okay. way they, they know if they have to, you know, raise their hand to excuse themselves. Yeah. So um, memory camp, I'll just briefly describe it. And then we're going to see, uh, we're going to see it a little bit, which I think will be fun for people. Uh, memory camp happens in the north woods of uh, Wisconsin in a place called St. Germain. 
and it's Ooh. on a place. Uh, the the actual spot is called Moon Beach and Moon Lake, and uh, it was it was very it's very beautiful up there. And uh, it was founded by John and Susan McFadden, uh, who were also responsible for starting the Memory Cafe movement in Wisconsin. And there's oh. now dozens of dozens and dozens of memory cafes all over the state. They're the ones who brought it. And they, they had this idea of taking that kind of concept of the memory cafe where it's a support group uh, for people living with dementia and their families. And they said, Let, let's do a sleepaway camp. And so they contacted um, Moon Beach and, um, and they said, yes, that's a great idea. And so this would have been our third year and my role is uh, last year and this year is as poet in residence. And um, so this would have been our third year, uh, but of course everything's canceled because of the quarantine. So we didn't wanna let it go by entirely. So we said, well, let's do some virtual programming. So Saturday, uh, September 12th at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're going to do a virtual moon beach and memory camp. Now I want to show you Fabu and everybody watching um, along with us uh, a little bit of what what does it look like because you probably have an idea but let's just see uh, I'm gonna do a screen share here and you're gonna hey. see you're gonna see a little this is a little one minute video and we're gonna see what it looks like so here we go So that is uh, the landscape. You got to see a little bit of uh, of the lake. Let's just go back. I just love this it's is the beautiful. lake. Beautiful, very and, beautiful. Uh, yeah, thank you. And you can't see them, but I'm gonna look up in the right hand corner of the of the of the lake shot, and that's where the eagle's nest was. And there was two uh, eagles that were fledging. They had, you know, they had gone from being baby eagles. And when we were there, they were teenage eagles. Okay. Goggy, awkward, you know, just, just kind of ill-mannered teenage eagles that would fly. They flew into cars and they flew up on the roof and they'd oh. fall off the roof. They just were very, uh, as teenagers can be, they were loving and kind, but they also were a little awkward. So that's, uh, that's one of the things. And then I'll just show you, this is the camp. It started in 1957. And uh, I'm gonna do the stop share now. So that is um, just to give people, a, a, you know, what's it like a little bit. Now, one of the things of doing this virtual camp, and um, I had reached out to you earlier, and so I've already been using it. So a big part of, the, of this virtual camp is to do support calls for cam campers, for, families that have gone in the past. So we've been yes. calling them up. We've been involving them in a found art project, which there'll be stuff about that, that people can participate if they want. But I have used your techniques that you shared with me and reconnected with a family. And we had such a great call. It just was really lovely. So that's, that's a lot of me talking. And I'm going to turn it over to Fabu now. And will you just Tell us a little bit about your work you do with the uh, as an outreach specialist with the Alzheimer's Dementia Research Center there at the UW. Do you guys say UW? I, I feel like I'm a local when yeah, I Yeah, all the hip, cool people say UW. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm a local. I feel like I'm going the right yes, way around. Yes, you say the, UW. You know, I'm going, I'm going clockwise around the square. Yeah. Uh, on farmer's market when I say you dub. So Fabu, take us through uh, your role there and then tell us what are the best practices? What are the things that we want to know uh, doing support and care calls? Well, first of all, they really are important because, um, well, it's not just a job that I have, but it's actually an honor. It really is a privilege to work with older adults because they're such accomplished people and most of them are always so modest, never thinking that, they, that they've done as much as they have in life or all of their wonderful experiences. So 
I would recommend people to, especially during COVID, the COVID-19 pandemic, to reach out to seniors, not just in your family, but in your neighborhood, in your community, across the country. And phone calls and um, Zooms like we're doing are really, really wonderful ways to do that. So as an outreach specialist, one of my primary goals is to recruit and to retain people in the study. And what the study is ultimately trying to do is find a cure for Alzheimer's disease. So I interact with seniors who have memory loss, but some who have none at all, because you need to study healthy brains as well. So in the check-in calls that I do, the first thing that I do is get myself ready by um, making sure I have the time for the call. So you want to allow people as much time as they need to talk to you. And so the first thing I do is make sure that uh, I don't have anything um, healthy that's brains as well. pressing or important so to do so that I am able to really devote time to listening. I do have some seniors who have hearing problems, so I put in the earbuds so that they can hear me as clearly as possible. I remove uh, background noise, and I keep a pad and a pen right next to uh, the telephone or if I'm doing a Zoom, so I can take notes on anything that I need to remember about the interaction. For example, um, I'm always doing a check-in. How are you doing? If someone has a question for me about resources or if they have um, uh, a concern that I'm able to help with, well, I can immediately take notes. I can immediately uh, write it down or maybe go back in the conversation and touch base with them again on whatever that concern was or whatever that question was. So it's really important uh, for me to, um, you know, be very invested in the phone call, but also, if needed, to take some notes to refer back to. I never promise people that I can do anything in terms of resources, but I really try very hard uh, to not just listen, but to meet any requests that I can about additional resources because especially during COVID-19 and for seniors who might have a memory loss or any other health issues or just being protective of their health, they might not be able to get around as much. Um, and so I can be a valuable resource by uh, looking up information for them or contacting someone for them as needed. In my conversation, I talk uh, slowly and clearly, uh, you know, I make, uh, uh, well, I'm from the South, Gary, so people say we talk slow anyway. <laughs> but I find uh, on telephone communication, that's really important to be clear, but also to talk slowly and sometimes to repeat things. And as always, even with face to face conversation as well as Zoom conversation or any kind, it's important to be a good listener. And I have on my tips for clear communication and check-in calls, always be kind. Just always be kind. So of course, sometimes I do talk to people who have been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. And that conversation can go in many different ways, depending on how the person is feeling that day. So it really is important to be patient. It's important to be kind. And it's important not to try and steer the conversation any particular way or to prove anything to the person or to point out that they're not thinking in logical ways. Really, check-in calls are to be supportive to that person. That's really your main goal, to offer support, to be a listening ear, to be kind and to let people know they're not alone in the world. Anything else you can do is an added bonus. And of course, what are the dividends? First of all, I feel like I'm a much wiser person from listening to elders and seniors. Secondly, they have the most terrific sense of humor. 
you know, laughing at so many different things. And here's what I'm always amazed at is people's perseverance and stamina despite the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, despite any kind of other health concerns they might be having, despite just the, uh, you know, the issues of aging in general. So it's, um, it's actually quite a gift quite a gift to be able to interact and to talk and to listen and to share. That is fantastic. We are getting a, a few comments uh, on uh, our Facebook Live, which I will uh, I'll share with you now. Some reason, every time I do this, there's a beeping sound. I don't know if you hear it or not, but I hear a like a boom. So, you know, ignore that if that happens. Um, so we have uh, Regina Coop, uh, who is... Uh, really quite an amazing um, therapist and psychologist who works with elders. She says to this, she says, uh, Fabu, I love your philosophy about working with older adults being an honor, and I couldn't agree more. And then she also asked uh, about the uh, teenage eagles. Uh, she asked if they wear braces. <laughs> <laughs> and at first I didn't, I did, you know, I was thinking like, like leg braces or wing braces. And then I realized she was talking about teeth and I, I flashed back when I was a teenager and I had to wear, I wore the, the thing that looks like the football helmet that comes out, you know, comes uh -huh. around because they had a strap and stuff. And Hey, I, that's uh, why you have straight teeth today, Gary. <laughs> it is. I have to think, I have to thank Dr. Hoshiyama. Thank you, Dr. Hoshiyama. <laughs> <laughs> but um, and he um, I was only supposed to wear it like a couple of hours a day. But I in, in my teenage brain, I thought, well, if I wear it more, it'll work better. <laughs> so more I wear it all better. the time. And mm -hmm. uh, and then Dr. Hoshiyama said, well, you can stop wearing it now. That was a big day, boy. But yeah, I didn't think about the Eagles having braces. So that's very funny. Now, let me see. Um, we have. Um, Let's see. There's uh, there's not a lot of people watching right now, but there are there are some, and of course this will live on, so people can um, continue. It will be on here, and people can watch it. We'll use it. We'll promote this in other ways. But right now we have uh, we have uh, three or four people that are watching, and if anybody wants to um, write in a question, now would be the time. You could do that, and uh, Fabu and I will uh, attempt to answer it, or Fabu will answer it. We'll see if anybody writes in any questions. Um, of course, this is the part of the show where you're just like, oh, we should have just moved on. Why did we, why did I stop? <laughs> but um, let's, um, let's also, uh, you know, I know you have a second poem. And, yes. uh, and I think, I don't know how, let's see. Oh yeah, we've been on for a long time. We, I said 15 minutes, it's already way, way longer than that. So, um, so that's okay. So why don't we do, let me, uh, let me take another quick peek and see. I don't think anybody's writing in any questions at this point, although our numbers are going up. We're getting more people watching the longer we stay on. That's always mm -hmm. good. So why don't we, if you would, honor us with another poem and, um, and, and tell us a little bit about the poem too, uh, just to give us a context of it. So this one is one of the poems at a facility here in Madison that I worked with. And this facility, unfortunately, uh, closed. It's Carmenta. And it uh, was located in Madison. And it was uh, one of my favorite places to be. So this is one of the poems that we created together. The people at Carmenta were very interesting. And the reason I chose this one to read today, because for the most part, uh, they were confined to the facility and could not move around and travel anymore. But of course, through poetry, we can travel everywhere. I've seen water by the Carmenta poets. I was in Mexico in 1974. I heard bird calls that I'd never heard before. What I remember most is a hotel right on the Pacific Ocean. I've been to California, Mexico, and both sides of Canada. I saw both ends of the ocean. Sitting there, watching the waves of the Pacific Ocean, you are at peace because you are just sitting there. 
and have no reason to complain. In Florida, I saw the Atlantic Ocean. I've seen the Chesapeake Bay. When you see water, it brings out emotions. I grew up down south and saw the mighty Mississippi River. It was something to see and hear. Water is life. Madison is surrounded by lakes. We have our own water spots here. I travel a lot in my dreams. Oh, wow. I don't think you could have picked a better poem uh, to, to emphasize uh, how we use poetry with elders, how mm -hmm. they're able to, in their imagination, uh, can travel again. And, you know, it's almost, uh, I mean, it's just uh, almost magic that people, we can use our minds like this. And also to, just to emphasize, uh, you know, the memory camp part, because one of the things, a poem from last year, uh, ended with, uh, I am one with the water. Uh, so really a similar theme there. Well, that was beautiful. And that's why that memory camp is sounds so wonderful, even via uh, Zoom, is because it does give you that chance to explore, to travel, and to create. Yeah, and as they say, because um, it's families that are coming together, and it's often multiple generations. And the the one thing that the, the you know it's the joke, you know how you get a joke, and every it keep, people keep telling it. So one of the families said uh, that you know it, it's been many years since we've all been able to share a bathroom. <laughs> We and had, that's the truth. <laughs> yeah, we had every everyone from uh, like a, a two-year-old that was the camp um, director's little girl, and uh, on up to a um, a woman in her nineties that had been a veteran uh, in World War II. So it was a real wide range of ages, and and just to see the families come together was beautiful. Now, um, trying to be diligent and, and good hosts. Let's go back over some of the high points of your talk. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna say something and you tell me if I got it right or you can expand on it. We'll just have a little chat around it. So when okay. you're making the, okay, all right, good. So when you're making the support calls, you should be invested. Yes, totally invested. And that means to me, when I hear you say that Fabu, it means not only am I talking and, and, and calling them to reach out to them, but I'm deeply listening. Exactly. And I'm listening to their, their tone, not just the words they say, but their tone. Mm -hmm. And also uh, the second technique that I took note of, get it, is taking notes. Yes. It and really that, is important. Because sometimes somebody will say something and you can do both. Like while I'm, especially on Zoom now, or when I'm on the phone, I can be listening well and still taking down notes. And that's in order not to miss anything, especially if there's a question or a concern. Yeah, and that um, is also how we create the poems. It's how you created the, the beautiful poem you just read is we ask questions and we write down what they're saying. So I, I you know, I think that's a great, um, sort of cross uh, way we use that technique. Now, That's the other good. one, uh, and this I thought was, uh, was very important. Don't over promise. Exactly. Yes. I don't promise to do anything. So you're just being there and checking in and listening is the primary goal. Anything else that you can do is, is really helpful and but don't promise anything so that you don't have to disappoint. And so uh, I just take down the information and say, I'll look into it. And if I do say, I'm going to get back to you, then of course I do follow through. That is of primary importance, but I can't say to them, oh, um, I'll make sure that um, that happens or that changes for you. I wish I had the power to do that, Gary. So it is really important to never overpromise. Yeah, and that leads right into the next one, um, 
which is you're not saying that you can never do anything because they may request something that you can do for them and and that uh, that point is to meet those requests to follow through that's important yes. with everyone but certainly with people that are navigating uh, dementia yes it's true it's very important just to uh, be present yes now this next one is my favorite one because i am if if i get a critique at a poetry reading it's that i read too fast and you said this you said you got to do it slow got slow. slow slow and steady <laughs> slow and steady and you got to you know good morning blues blues how do you do cuz the slower that gets the better you know i mean it's just got to slow down that is that slow and slow is good in lots of things but certainly when we're communicating with people to speak slowly and be articulate but also you know there's there's the slow food movement which is opposed to like fast food places correct so there's, slow is definitely in these days slow uh, is the way to go it is isn't it and it's there's uh, I'm sorry, yeah. go ahead. I cut you it's off. Showing us, it's showing us a new way to be in the world. Yeah, and, and certainly we are learning to slow down. Now, I have a friend, uh, and many people do this, but I've got a friend out here in New York, uh, Tracy Paris, and she is extended from the slow food, is called slow nature. And it means it means oh. taking walks and being outside, but also, you know, just noticing what's around you. It's true. It's very true. Well, I mean, to be a poet means looking at the details. We look closer at life, and I think in many ways we do go slower. Yeah, you. in order to notice the details, you have to slow down. In order to notice the details, you have to slow down. And mm -hmm. that brings the next point, which is to repeat. Yes, repetition. Repetition and also... Um, You know, when we're talking to people, we, we sometimes in support and care calls uh, talk about the concept of validation. Uh -huh. And validation could be many things, but one of the things, and this is also in conflict resolution too, somebody says something, you paraphrase or say the words back to them to let them know that you've heard them. That you heard them, right. Yeah. So if someone honor, is, right, giving you a complaint, I'm sorry that happened to you. This is what I hear you saying, or yes, you're right. Yeah, so so we've got the we've got our points that we've gone over, and we are going to um, when this this will live live here on Facebook Live. We'll also post it to YouTube, and we'll use it to um, not only help to promote the memory camp, but also just to give people some techniques if they uh, find in their lives. For whatever reason that they need to do uh, care calls and support calls, they can look to this. And I have the text that Fabu has created around this. So we will include that text so that you can see the points too. Um, let me just quickly, I'm just going to quickly look and see if any questions have come in. And I don't, oh, oh, we got uh, my dear friend, Teresa uh, Gallon from, um, from Albuquerque, New Mexico, writes in, shouts out, shouts out to Fabu and Gary. Now, Teresa, uh, we won't go along, but I got to just tell you a little bit about her, Fabu, as tell we wrap me. up. Teresa is um, one of these people, and I, I believe that she's retired now because the up until the COVID, every month or every couple of weeks or, you know, a little, not too much time would go by, and she would be in japan and oh. then you'd go you'd oh now she's in ireland okay and and she posts these great photos and uh it really makes you feel like you you're traveling so teresa a big shout out back to you 
for all of your fantastic, not only is she a great poet, but she's a world traveler, and that is a great thing to be. So uh, we are getting close to the end of our time together. I said it was going to be 15 minutes, but it's much closer to, uh, to 30, 29 minutes. Oh, my God. Woo! <laughs> time flies when you're having fun. Now, Fabu, you got to help out and participate in my very first uh, Zoom webinar live on Facebook, and I think it went pretty well. We didn't seem to have any technical glitches at this point that I can see, so I thank you for that. Uh, do you have any parting words to our uh, people watching, but also, you know, maybe uh, for people that are Maybe they've got a loved one that has somebody that has dementia, or maybe maybe they themselves have dementia. What what uh, words do you have for them? Well, thank you first for this opportunity. And I was saying for people who are caregivers, always be kind, because that really goes a long way. For people who are struggling with different um, health concerns and with dementia, um, I said it hopefully best in the poem. Please remember, well, please feel the love. How about that? Because I think that love transcends even our dementia and even our other health concerns. I really believe that. I think love transcends uh, dementia and other health concerns. And I think it is the core of us as human beings. I'm going to get a little teary-eyed now. <laughs> oh, that was such a beautiful sentiment. Uh, I appreciate you so much. Thank you, as I do you. Well, we are going to now say goodbye to everybody. And again, um, um, this will live on here in the, in the <laughs> Ethernet or whatever, what they used <laughs> to call the information superhighway. Yes. All right, I'm going to wave goodbye, and I'll say goodbye to Fabu, and goodbye, everybody. Thanks for watching, and uh, we will catch you next time with more stuff about Memory Camp and ways that you can be a camper. Thank you, Fabu. Thank you, Gary.